farmers over the next few years are going to go through unprecedented change. In fact, many would say that that change has already started. And if we're going to get farmers to keep on producing food, we're going to have to get them profitable and more viable. And the only way to truly do that is to work with nature rather than substitute for it. In effect, we'll find and are finding that nature means business. The UK has some of the most beautiful landscapes in the world, but if truth be told, they are managed landscapes, managed by a relationship between farming and nature. And over the last thousand years or so, any changes that have taken place in farming and in nature have been incremental. But over the last 70 years, we have found a change where it has been output at all costs where we've forgotten the relationship between farming and nature and we now need to move back to working with nature rather than substituting for it. I've analysed something like 80 different farm accounts with a view to helping those farms plan their future and every one of those 80 farms has exhibited exactly the same characteristics and those characteristics are exemplified by a sweet spot a point where nature and farming come together. The point at which farming is at its most profitable and nature is at its best. We've called this Maximum Sustainable Output, or MSO for short. Let's now go and meet one of those farmers. Yeah, so this is a, a very typical uh, hill farm for Upper Wharfdale, um, running from 750 feet in the valley bottom there to 2,300 feet on Buckden Pike, which is behind me. Rainfall, annual rainfall of 72 inches, uh, typically very inaccessible for vehicles, six month winters, dodgy summers can, can create havoc with getting our crops in. So in 1990, Five, we were lucky enough to secure the tenancy of this National Trust farm as it came up onto the open market. Uh, I'm a first generation farmer. We had to borrow quite a lot of money in those days to, to buy the flock of sheep which were inherent to the farm. And the standard thing to do in those days was to work with the subsidies and the environmental agreements to produce sheep and beef off these sort of hills. And the way that was done was to keep the, as many sheep as you possibly could within the constraints of the farm and run suckler cows on a system which had been developed over the years for being kept inside throughout the winter and continental type cattle. So throughout those 25 years, while we were actually making money, the point of where we were making the profit from was never really recognised. And then all of a sudden, four years ago, 2017, we had a bit of a wake up call in that our HLS agreement came to its final year and we were informed at very, very short notice that it would not be either moved forward or we would not be able to get into another scheme. So that, in effect, meant that we were going to have a 12-month break in our environmental payment income. So we analysed the business with the help of a, a, a consultant to find out where all the money was coming from and where it was going to and really realised that the livestock enterprises weren't actually turning the profit which we had envisaged they were doing considering the amount of labour and such like that was going into them so after analysing our business we were basically working out a way of getting through the next 12 months because the subsidy portion of the income represented the annual profit it was at the point where we uh, decided to, to pull the business in pieces that this idea of MSO was brought to our attention. An MSO means maximum sustainable output and we did the calculation on our farm and we worked out that probably heading towards MSO would be a safer bet 
considering the constraints that were um, available to us, coupled with a diversification project. Obviously we're in a, a very touristified area and one of the main assets which we had been neglecting was the number of tourists that we have coming to the area. So we decided to set up a small campsite which was immediately going to get us over the 12 months hiccup of no income. We decided to head towards the MSO but we weren't sure just how to do it. We, we bought a core herd of traditional breed cattle. So these cattle spend 12 months of the year outside. They have very little cost attributed towards them other than potentially having to take some silage to them in January and February time or during periods of inclement weather when, the, when they can't actually physically get to the to the grass that's grazing. As times progressed and we've increased the number of cattle that we've got we have actually gone to a, uh, a system which is based on on the New Zealand style of deferred grazing. So what we actually do now is fasten large lumps of this upland land stock free for three or four months of the summer and allow the grass to grow as long as it possibly can and that leaves a lot of rough grass for the cattle to graze over winter so we can manage to keep away from the cattle over winter with the silage and the inputs by just allowing them to forage around on large areas of limestone ground that we have available to us which was actually being underutilised so we were paying rent on big areas of upland ground but not actually using them very efficiently because a lot of the sheep were having twin lambs and they were getting more and more pushed onto the more productive area of lands which is obviously the valley bottoms which then meant that we were having to buy fertiliser to keep that land uh, growing grass so we've been gradually moving into a transition period of keeping more cattle and keeping less sheep we decided not to do it all at once it has actually taken four or five years it will take seven years to get to where we want to be because obviously there's cash flow issues with changing enterprises um, and the cattle are quite a, a slow uh, growing project we don't sell them till they're 30 months old so we, we couldn't afford a 30 month gap in income so we, ca we carried on with the sheep and we've gradually increased the number of cattle that we've got about with the intention of probably calving somewhere in the region of 70 cows in the future and producing 500 lambs and that figure was decided by a calculation done for MSO on, the, on our farm business so we basically need to produce 500 lambs 70 cattle a year obviously there's some further tweaks to make as we head towards 2025 when when the single farm payment drops again our skills in managing these upland grasslands for cattle production should improve the way that they have done over the last few years which will then allow us to increase our number of cattle that we sell from somewhere near 70 towards probably 100 which will then increase the profitability back to a level where we may be able to manage so thinking back on the whole scenario, the most important point was where we started pulling the business in bits, looking back to see where all the money was going and where it was going to come from. And nobody makes those decisions lightly. It's very, very scary to make any changes whatsoever. And generally people don't do it unless they have to do it. And we absolutely have to do it. And it is the best thing we've done up to now. Welcome to Castells Farm up here in Yorkshire. Uh, we farm about 280 acres of um, mainly grassland, but we also have some rough, rough lands over the over the wall there. Um, as you can see, we have a, a moor bordering our farm. Uh, lots of grouse shooting goes on on there. Um, we're about 750 feet at our highest here. Um, we have um, peaty soil on top of clay. It's not the easiest farm farm to farm, but we seem to be doing okay. We were farming um, around 200 cows on an intensive housed system um, about 10 years ago, um, which was very labour intensive, 
um, quite tying, we were carving all year round and so we, just, we, were, we were looking for systems to change to to make it easier for a work-life balance and to attract the right staff. We are currently still milking uh, 200 cows all around, um, though we have become more extensive. We're carving the autumn for three months, September to November. Um, doing this has enabled us to cut our concentrates down to around one and a half tonne a year from three and a half tonnes when we were very intensive. We've also managed to cut our fertiliser and our vet bulls and as a result become more profitable. What helped us make these decisions was doing a business review with Chris. Us farmers, you know, we're very busy. I found it very helpful working with Chris. He did a lot of, put a lot of work in to find the areas we could improve on. And, and they're the areas we're looking at now to, to move on forward with. We still think we can improve on this and become more profitable um, by reducing cow numbers, purchase feeds, um, the vet's bills, and fertiliser, heading towards maximum sustainable output. And we believe we can improve our profits even further by increasing the lactations from three and a half to six. By increasing the number of lactations from three or three and a half to six, the herd productivity will increase, cow welfare will improve, and there will also be a reduction in the placement costs. And this reflects how a working with nature approach is so much more profitable. But not only is Sean heading towards an MSO, he has, with Joe, diversified into a glamping enterprise. We have established a glamping site down here on a piece of land behind the farm that was unproductive for the farm. Really, it was a wasteland. It was very wet and lots of stones. But we saw an opportunity to use the landscape as um, a unique selling point for visitors to come and enjoy the views and the sunset and get out in the wild of the Yorkshire Dales um, and have a glamping experience in these luxury cabins really. Um, our reason for doing this was th the farm didn't really have a, a way of supporting me. Um, I couldn't come back to the farm, leave my day job without help getting the farm to a position where it was generating, generating more of an income um, that would support us as a whole family. So this business was established as something as a um, sort of separate to the, the dairy enterprise, but that would give us a steady income at times when perhaps the dairy enterprise um, was either less productive or um, the milk price was, was fluctuating. We could bring in um, an extra source of income really and make the farm more sustainable in the long term. We farm approximately 490 acres of which approximately 50 is mowable. Uh, there's another 75 acres or thereabouts which is what I would call good pasture and the rest is fairly rough stuff. Um, we came here in 2008. After about four or five years here, we could see that uh, no matter what we did to the sheep, whether we improved them, we, we bought in recorded blackface tups to try and improve sheep performance. Uh, we looked at doing, uh, uh, at finishing cattle and, and doing a sort of uh, boxed beef enterprise with our Galloways, but really, it was never going to uh, make this farm sustainable in the long run. And uh, come about 2012, we had the opportunity to get into the last tranche of environmental stewardship, higher level schemes. This was our last chance. This was in terms of, uh, of opportunities to create something sustainable. And we basically capitalized that income over 10 years and invested it in a cheese making business. Why cheese? Our farm is terribly uh, constrained by geography. The house is at 890 feet above sea level. The land rises to about 1500 feet above sea level. We live at the end of three miles of stone track. We have about 60 inches plus of rain annually. Our soils are peat over clay, really not really very marginal, poor ground. Uh, so we, we came to the conclusion that, that really if we were going to do anything we had to create an enterprise that added significant value and that we looked for a, to sell that in a premium market uh, and we, we considered all sorts of things 
and finally came to the conclusion that we had the uh, elements of a really good marketing story here. We live in a beautiful place. And to that, we added Northern Dairy Shorthorn cows, which are the rarest of the rare. They're native to the Yorkshire Dales. Uh, they're a dual purpose breed. And we added a, a pre-war raw milk Wensleydale recipe to create what we hope is a, a unique product. Our cows uh, calve in April and they give a milk yield. They'll peak at probably 15 litres, three gallons, and by the end of September, they'll be giving maybe a gallon, something like that, and we dry them off. Uh, so we make cheese while the grass grows, and therefore it's important that we look after our grass, that our grass is diverse. We have no monoculture perennial ryegrass wards. We can't reseed. We are trying to encourage what some people would, uh, would regard as weeds, but they are uh, really we're trying to make a diverse sward and we know from science that that, that contributes towards the flavours and aromas of the cheese in the end and we aimed high uh, we wanted to sell our cheese as a premium product and we think we've achieved that we're selling it at a price that we have asked for not that the market has dictated to us and there is more demand for our cheese than we can supply uh, we're selling into uh, Neil's Yard Dairy in London and we're selling to the Courtyard Dairy at Settle and to local shops as well. What we have here is our milking parlour. It's a 1930s design, 6-6 six, six address milking parlour. We milk about 30 cows at the moment with in about an hour and a half. Uh, with that significant preparation because remember we're making raw milk cheese. Uh, the reason we make raw milk cheese is because if we didn't, the cheese would lack the flavour that is imparted by the grass and the herbs and the diverse diet that our cows eat. This parlour uh, is a lovely place to work. Uh, we've got a fantastic view out of the back there. We only milk once a day because we don't have the labour to milk twice a day. Um, and our cows give a very low yield of milk. Therefore, our cheese is, is priced at a premium to make it viable. Okay, so this is our cheese making unit. Uh, it's a converted shipping container, 20 foot shipping container. Um, this is a cheese making vat. What you can see in front of you is cheese is draining in cheese plots. So the cheese making process begins at four o'clock in the morning when I get up, get changed into my cheese making gear and transfer the milk from the bulk tank, which has been cooled to four degrees, into the cheese making vat. We start to warm that milk up uh, in the vat. Last year we made, which was our first proper full year, we made about 1,200 kilos. Uh, this year we're going to double that, we're probably going to maybe more than double that, maybe two, two and a half tonnes of cheese. My target really is somewhere, and I think what, I think that sustainably, I think our target is going to be somewhere around five to six tonnes. The, the subsidy income on the farm is, is somewhere in the region of 50,000 pounds. My first target was to achieve that in terms of cheese sales and we will do that this year and that's our second year. One of the first things we did was to reduce sheep numbers and and we've constantly we've reduced sheep numbers for the last five or six years and the gross margin of the sheep of the sheep enterprise is is the same as it was when, now with 150 ewes as it was when we had 450 uh, and prices of lambs are something similar to what they were five or six years ago. By dint of looking at cheese and by reducing sheep numbers was the impact on the biodiversity of the far that the farm has displayed and reducing sheep numbers has made a dramatic impact in floral biodiversity and uh, regeneration of trees um, sim simply by removing them and, and reducing that stocking density. We, we no longer lamb our sheep in our meadows, which is traditionally done in the Yorkshire Dales. Um, we save that uh, grass growth for winter forage. As a result, we've been able to reduce, well, we've been able to cut out nitrogenous fertilizers. Uh, we are moving to uh, Chris Clark's uh, maximum sustainable output. And the impact on our bottom line has been positive. The impact on our uh, wildlife and biodiversity has been positive too. We've got all the wading birds here, curlews, lapwings, oyster catchers, red shanks, golden plovers, 
uh, snipe, woodcock. It's a win-win, or win-win-win. Win for us, win for, for biodiversity, and win for the, the farm in terms of profitability. And, and, and actually, from a lifestyle perspective, because we have a, an enterprise that is, uh, we work hard for six months during the summer, that gives us a chance over the winter to reflect on, on our business, to take some time out, to go on holiday, to spend time doing maintenance, uh, explore other avenues for our business, explore other interests. Uh, and if we wish to, we could probably even explore another part-time job over the winter if, if that was what we deemed necessary. But our hope really at the moment is that, that cheese will provide this us and this farm with a long-term future. It's delivered a raison d'etre for us, it's delivered a raison d'etre for the farm, it's delivered a raison d'etre for the Northern Dairy Shorthorn breed as well. We've seen three incredible businesses and there are several things that we've learned from those businesses. And the first thing is that every farm business right now should be reviewing its farm accounts, reviewing where it is in preparation for what's coming and the changes that are about to happen. Secondly, that review of the farm accounts will undoubtedly show that a reduction in variable costs such as feed, fertilizer, vet and med sprays will lead to more profitability. It will take us to the MSO point, the maximum sustainable output of our farms. And thirdly, treat nature as a stakeholder in the farm business. It will generate more profit. We have concentrated on three upland farms in North Yorkshire. But actually, the exactly the same characteristics occur on every single farm in the whole of the UK, no matter what type of farm. To find out more about maximum sustainable output, how to get advice on it, or how to apply it to your business, please visit our website.